What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 53 and we start today's episode off with uh, our physio coming back to us and saying that Jack Cobbs has been injured of course. We saw him get injured in the last game, he'll be out for a few weeks. And uh, also Chile then came back to us and said since we haven't heard from you we take it you don't want to manage Chile so we're going to rescind the offer. Uh, either accept it or we'll rescind it in a couple of days. And of course Uruguay as well was there but I decided to go ahead and reject the Uruguay one and take Chile. So we are going to be managing international for the first time in the series we've taken hold of Chile and the reason being is because I guess it would be kind of fun to try and develop their squad and also because they do have a player called Brian Carrasco who we can develop for club and country and Chile just kind of felt right do you know what I mean as soon as they came in that was the first nation I kind of thought yeah like that could actually be quite fun so yeah we're going to try and develop Chile they've got some very decent young players and um, also some fantastic players as well in uh, Vidal and Sanchez so yeah, I mean, you know, to be honest, like, it could be kind of, I, I know I did say that I was waiting for a five-star nation, and of course I was really hoping for England, but to be honest, England just never, never come in for us, you know, they, they just seem to hate me for some reason, so, uh, I'm never going to get hold of England, and um, no real five-star nations came in, other than Belgium, and I think Uruguay might have been a five-star nation, but I'm not sure, but Chile are four-and-a-half-star nations, so they're not bad, and um, they're actually quite good, to be honest, and they got some decent standout players as well, uh, like I said, such as Sanchez and Vidal, got some young players developing as well, such as Carrasco, and yeah, it should be good fun, and, and Angelo Enriquez as well, and, and several others that I can't mention, because I, I can't remember the names, but um, it should be good fun to manage Chile, and um, the only negative is, and I I completely forgot about it is that Chile would have just competed in the whatever it's called on FIFA like the, the South American Cup or whatever it's going to be called um, they would have just competed in it in 2015 of course summer of 2015 we're now in autumn 2015 so that's just gone so you won't have that uh, tournament to compete in and the next tournament for Chile is the World Cup in 2018 in Russia um, that's the next international tournament so we've actually got two and a half seasons with no international football, uh, you know, tournaments. Because, of course, uh, for those of you that are new to the new to the channel and new to the series, we don't play qualifiers in our career mode series. We just play the tournaments. So, you know, I, I might play some qualifiers, but to be honest, that means we've got nothing until the tournament in 2018. We'll have to wait and see. But um, anyway, the first game of today's episode was against Chelsea here at the Den, and the first goal came in the 16th minute, and what a strike by Kelvin as well. Uh, his Brazilian colleague Ramirez lost out to him. Kelvin intercepted, ran through. He still had a lot of work to do, but what a superb finish. Definitely one of the goals of the season so far. Intercepts Ramirez from just outside the area and just levers it into the top corner. That was so accurate, so powerful. Literally no chance for Courtois, one of the best goalkeepers in the game. That was a wonderful, wonderful strike. No chance for the goalkeeper and uh, that made it 1-0 and a sign of what Kelvin can do you know I mean last year we brought him for 2 million he was you know relatively average when he brought him in but uh, this season he's just shown he's had some fantastic start of season form and um, he's just shown just what a bargain 2 million pounds is for him that's a fantastic goal brings up his fourth goal in the Barclays Premier League so far and that made it Millwall 1 Chelsea 0 and uh, <coughs> after that as well I did decide to show the sliders because I know I know I know I don't need to but it's just there's, there's always one or two Two, always one or two that question the validity um, of playing on legendary and then occasionally scoring really nice goals so um that's why I did it. I, I know I don't have to. I know the vast majority of you trust me completely, but there's always, always one or two that cause a lot of doubt and cause some discussion and cause some uh, negativity in the comments, and I never like that, so there you go. But um, anyway, a few minutes after that, we play out from the back in typical Millwall fashion. Uh, Liam Trotter's onto the ball, takes on Ryan Bertram, beats him with the 1 2, played with Kelvin, the goal scorer, goes down the right hand side, a real good chance as he crosses the ball in, but Danny Ings' shot is brilliantly saved by Courtois. Fantastic stop by the Belgian keeper, and it's still Millwall 1, Chelsea 0. But only half an hour. Mark Eden Hazard goes through here. Great chance, but McGregor makes a fantastic save. And uh, Scott Malone then boots the ball into the stand. So still Mill 1, Chelsea 0. But a few minutes after that, John Terry gives the ball away. Danny Ings is onto it. All the pace in the world from Danny Ings. Chips the ball over Courtois. What a goal this is going to be. But Callas has one of the most incredible goal line clearances you'll ever see. It looks like it's definitely going to go into the top corner. But uh, unfortunately, Callas just boots the ball off the line with the acrobatic clearance, the overhead kick clearance. What an amazing goal line clearance. Still 1 0. And uh, Danny Ings does have the ball in the back of the net here from Dongu's cross uh, a few minutes afterwards. But as you can see, it's just offside. So still Millwall 1, Chelsea 0 there. But the game was just actually...
action packed from the first minute. What a fantastic game it was at the Den. But in the 41st minute, how about this? Denver Bar is all alone and puts the ball into the empty net here. And I just, I kind of just dropped the controller at this point in shock. I was just wondering how on earth the former Newcastle striker was all alone because it was, um, I think it might have been Van Ginkel, I'm not sure, but one of the Chelsea midfielders just booted the ball forward. And Denver Bar was all alone. Fabricio and Beavers, there was such a gap between the two of them. You know, as a centre back partnership, you've got to stick tight to your men. And they just left Denver Bar all alone. McGregor came out for it. Of course, he was just outside his area, so he couldn't use his hands. He sort of just fell to the floor. Bar chested the ball around him and put it into the empty net. So it couldn't have been an easier finish for Bar. Lovely first touch, yes. But uh, even so, you've got to point the fingers at Fabricio and Beavers there. I've got no idea why on earth they left Denver Bar alone there. It was a good finish, but um, you know he took the ball well on the chest. But uh, to be honest, that was such a poor goal to concede. But in the 47th minute, a great chance for us to make it 2-1. Larson's cross in finds Kelvin. But uh, how on earth did Courtois save this? What a stop it was. Brilliant save by the Belgian goalkeeper. I crossed the ball in. I thought I'd, do it. I thought I'd done enough there, but that was just an amazing stop by Courtois. Despite conceding early, he was playing very, very well in this game. And uh, from the corner, it's Larson who crosses the ball in towards the head of Mark Beavers. It goes up in the air. Malone flicks it backwards. It comes to Fabricio. Fabricio finds Kelvin looking for his second goal of the game, but this time he can't find a top corner. He puts it over the bar, and it is still Millwall 1, Chelsea 1. But a couple minutes after that here, uh, Ed Nilsson does well to keep the ball in play. Finds Danny Ings. Danny Ings finds Kelvin, the goal scorer. Down the right side, he's got all the space in the world. He gets past Ryan Bertram with the step over. Shoots. Good save by Courtois, but there is Danny Ings at the far post, all alone. I thought he might have been offside there, but he wasn't. He was onside, and uh, he puts the ball into the bottom corner. I thought he almost messed it up as well, because as you'll see on the replay, um, he sort of shot it towards the other corner, and uh, it could have gone all the way across and out for a goal kick, but instead he did find the bottom corner, and that brought up his 10th goal in the Barclays Premier League so far, so what a fantastic investment he has been. I know I say that every time he scores, but I just can't get over how well he's been. But uh, it's Millwall 2, Chelsea 1. But uh, he's a good chance for Chelsea, but the shot goes straight to McGregor's hands. Uh, he throws the ball out quickly and finds Don Gu down the left-hand side here. Good chance for the former Barcelona man to use his pace. Gets past one, rolls the ball out wide to Seb Larson. Larson gets onto his right foot, plays an amazing cross field ball away to Kelvin. Kelvin beats Bertrand, who was really struggling to keep up with the Brazilian. He shoots, good save by Courtois. And then a follow up header is well saved again by Courtois. So despite conceding two goals, he was definitely on course for man of the match. He was playing really well, the Belgian goalkeeper, and it was still Millwall 2. Chelsea 1 as he keeps out Danny Ings' header there, <coughs> and it's still 2 1. But in the 80th minute here, a great chance for Chelsea. Lucas Piazon finds Van Ginkel, and what a fantastic pass into Juan Mata, who came off the bench to level the score 10 minutes ago. That was an absolutely superb pass. It really was just the awareness that Mata was going to be running through there, um, and a fantastic first-time ball. Brilliant pass, and that made it Millwall 2, Chelsea 2. Chelsea equalised with 10 minutes to go, and that is how the game finished. So, frustrating that we threw away what would have been a fantastic three points here at the Den uh, in the last 10 minutes, but it was a fantastically action-packed game as well. It was really good fun, and um, I think a draw is a fair result as well, but uh, it would have been nice to win, but I'll take the point. It's still a very good good result against a very, very strong side. But uh, straight after that, we had our first game with Chile here in the World Cup qualifiers. Of course, we currently sit top of our World Cup group as we take over Chile, and our first game was away against Uruguay, one of the sides we could have been uh, managing, and we drew one goal each. Uh, Suarez scored and Isla scored, so a 1-1 draw away in Uruguay for our first game uh, in international management with Chile, and uh, Vidal was suspended for that game, so he was back for the next one, which was at home to Peru, and I am thinking about possibly playing, playing a couple of World Cup qualifiers, just so I can get a taste of international football. Um, you know, otherwise we have to wait for two and a half in-game years, but uh, I don't know if we need to or not really, because we should, probably should qualify anyway, because our squad is quite good, and as you can see there, we beat Peru easily by four goals to one. And uh, that was good news for us. And Carrasco then comes to us straight afterwards and says he's ready to play, which is great because, of course, Carrasco didn't feature in any of those international games because he's been injured for us. And uh, he's coming back, which is fantastic. And we're also finding out that Jack Hobbs is coming back as well. So the two players that we had injured are now coming back into the team. And that is good news for us. So our following game uh, was against Manchester United here at Old Trafford. So uh, a draw against Chelsea in our last game was quite a good result. But against United, we've, we've never beaten United with Millwall. Uh, we faced them quite a few times, but our best result against them has been a nil-nil draw at the Den. So, yeah, trying to get revenge for, against United here, of course, because they were the side that beat us in the FA Cup final last year. Um, of course, 4-2 that game finished, so we're looking to get revenge here. United do sit ahead of us by a single point and a single place in the table. They're in fifth or in sixth. So, um, yeah, we come to Old Trafford you know, full of, you know, I wouldn't say negativity considering our record, but uh, even so, a little bit, you know, 
a little bit fearful, a little bit pessimistic, I should say that. But uh, anyway, we do take on Manchester United. And the first chance came in the 19th minute here. It was Fellaini who had the ball. Uh, he found Wilfred Zaha. Zaha ends up playing the ball through to Wayne Rooney, who goes one-on-one. -on -one, but he can only hit the post. So a great chance for United's number 10. But he can only hit the post there and probably should have scored. But just a few minutes after that, he had a good chance to make amends here. Uh, Wilfred Zaha is onto the ball, finds Raphael. He crosses the ball in. It's headed away, but it comes straight to Wayne Rooney. He gets the ball through the middle of Trotter. And uh, not sure who it was there. I think it might have been Jao Vitor. And he puts the ball into the back of the net. So he may have missed a really good chance a few minutes earlier. But he makes amends there. No mistake. And Wayne Rooney makes it Manchester United 1. Millwall 0. So United in front here. And in the 50th minute, Hernandez is onto the ball. Uh, finds Marouane Fellaini, one of the most overpowered players on FIFA. He gives it to Shinji Kagawa. And the Japanese man puts the ball into the back of the net. So United 2, Millwall 0 with 40 minutes on the clock to play. And yeah. Yeah, the game was basically over, really. We, we had barely any chances in this game. United just dominated from start to finish. I just find them so hard to play against on FIFA. And in the 57th minute, it could have got even worse. Kagawa's cross found Brain Rooney, but uh, his header did go into the back of the net, and that made it United 3 0 0. So things did indeed get worse, and uh, that made it 3 0 to United. And uh, sadly, that was also how the game finished. So a very disappointing game. We got completely battered by United, and uh, that feeling is very, very familiar, unfortunately for us. And uh, I guess we'll have to try and do better at a dent in the reverse fixture in the league. But uh, as always, guys, a big thank you for watching today's video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like, that's much appreciated. And it really does help my channel out. It only takes a second to click that like button. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.